guys? How are you doing? And how cool is this? We've got like a sketch version of Minecraft here. I think that I've found my favorite super secret setting, which is called pencil. Everything is just a sketch. Except for your inventory. Your inventory is the same. But other than that, if you just go in F1 mode, everything's a sketch of Minecraft. And it makes the coolest still screenshots, too. Except my screen keeps changing perspective because of the speed beacons. Uh, yeah, so we're going we're gonna to stay in here for just like a few minutes and then I'll go back to normal. But I haven't put up a video in a while, and I have a plan for today. We're going to make a water elevator. I haven't put up a video in a while, and someone asked if it was because I died. Uh, unfortunately, yes, I did die. Normally, when I die, my ghost will put up videos while I'm dead. Unfortunately, my ghost has been very busy recently, so he wasn't able to do that. But I'm back. It's me again. And I want to make a water elevator. I designed this in creative mode. And it's not a normal water elevator. You don't just swim up it. Uh, it's a water elevator that takes advantage of the fact that when you're... Ooh, a little bit of lag. When you're going out of water, you kind of get this little speed going up. You see, we kind of get that boost as we're going out of the water. And what it does is it dispenses water buckets at just the right time so that you always get that speed. And it ends up being... Uh, let's see, a dispenser fires every two ticks. And you have a one block, so that's... 10 blocks per second. This is a 20 ticks in a second, I believe. 10 blocks per second, which is pretty decent for a water elevator. Uh, it is two blocks wide, which means it's going to be uneven here, which is a shame. But yeah, I've got all the materials, or hopefully all the materials. I don't actually know how high this is. I don't think it's more than 128, though. I think it's less, so... This should be enough stuff. I'll need to get more buckets. That's going to be a pain, putting all the dispensers in there. But I'm just going to... I uh, cut. I'm going to build the whole thing, and then we're going to try it out. So, before you build something on a server, uh, especially if it's a really big project, and especially if it's redstone related, you should always check to make sure that it actually works on a server and not just in single player. And that is exactly what I did not do. Apparently, this elevator doesn't quite work uh, in multiplayer, if the server isn't running completely smoothly, if there's a little bit of lag, then it ends up it doesn't really work. So we're going to try it out here. It's probably not going to take us very high before it breaks, but it's possible we can get a little way up. Oh, that, that was bad. That was... Come on. Try this again. If it doesn't, uh, if we can't get it to work at all, then I'll just go into single player and show you how it works. Let's try this. Oh, the, you see it did it like a few times there, but then it sort of messed up. The problem is that uh, you can hear actually in the inconsistency of the dispensers going off. Every once in a while there'll be a little bit of a delay. Maybe they fire quicker or slower. Uh, well, it's always going to be they fire slower, but sometimes uh, it'll vary because of that, and that's going to mess up. Are jumping so even changing the timing on this wouldn't really work because it's just inconsistency which is the problem oh that time I actually just jumped too early that wasn't <laughs> that wasn't the uh, servers fault so it's unfortunate that this doesn't work maybe we'll have to build another elevator here I want to keep this one because it looks cool and sometimes if the server is running really well uh, you can't actually ride all the way up it but it's just a little bit tricky to get the timing to work just right. So the delay between each of these dispensers, well, the way it works, first of all, uh, is that when you walk up here, oh, messed it up again. You're actually just, in a chest's hitbox is a little less than a full block. You're actually just kind of on the edge of the water there. And that means that it, it makes it really easy, basically, to get that little boost when you jump out of the water. And then once you get that boost, the next dispenser here will fire. So say we walk up here. Let's not hit the pressure plate. We get the boost from this water block. Pop up, and then this one right here will go off, and then we'll get the boost from this water block. And that's sort of how it's meant to work. Nope, oh, I jumped too early. Oh, there we go. We got it like two boosts in a row. I guess I'm going to have to go into single player. There are a few people on right now, so it makes it a little worse. Whoops, <laughs> throw my sword on the ground. 
Uh, let me show you the redstone first on here, though. So the way it works, it's tileable. The glowstone isn't necessary, it's just for lighting. Um, let's get out of F5 mode. So here's the first one that comes from the pressure plate. The first signal goes into this dispenser, and then it comes out uh, from the repeater right here. I've realized after I made this, I could have actually done it with one fewer repeater. Technically, I think if this repeater wasn't here, if it was just a piece of redstone dust, and then I just set this to two ticks, it would also work. But anyway, it comes up here, and it goes into the next one, so this is the next dispenser up, and then this dispenser, I pull the redstone signal out with this repeater, and then this one loops up to the next one, and it just goes back and forth so that each of these is two ticks off from each other. Let's try this one more time. Nah, we got it like twice. Alright, so yeah, I'm going to go into a single player where I designed this, and then I can show you. I just have like one that's maybe ten blocks high, and I can show you how it works at least. Okay, so here we are in my redstone testing world, and this is the prototype that I based the design on the server off of. We just walk up here. You see we glide right up. It's much faster on here because there's no server delay. You can hear, if I just step on this, how much faster the dispensers go off and also how much more consistent it is. Uh, there's no sort of delay between them, and it's always the same amount of time. And of course, this one's much shorter, so it's not quite as much fun to ride up. But you get the idea. It's The thing that I like about it is it has sort of a cool feeling when you go up it, because you're just sort of like uh, jumping each time. It feels like you're gliding up, sort of. And uh, I'm planning on the server, I was going to put in a double pulse so that it would just uh, it, it would retract the water after each time. But I didn't end up doing that since it doesn't really work anyway. Let's ride up this. I want to see what it looks like riding up an F5. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. So yeah, this is what it's supposed to work. This is how it's supposed to work. Sometimes on the server, if I'm like the only one on, I can get it so that I ride it most of the way up, but it's still not as fast. It's usually just consistently slower. So probably not a great design to use uh, in multiplayer, but it's a neat single player design if you want to build it. And it's pretty simple once you get the pattern down. It takes a long time. It took me quite a few hours to build it on the server. Uh, of course, I built a pretty tall one. You could just build like something like this in maybe half an hour. But yeah, that's how you build it. So we're going to go back on the server and uh, maybe do some villager stuff with 1.8. So here is the villager trading building that I've been working on. Uh, pretty similar theme to the rest of this place that I've been going with recently, which is the stained clay and then uh, stone bricks and stone slabs. I threw in a few of these chiseled stone bricks because we can now make them in 1.8. Uh, just a couple of stone slabs on top of each other makes those. Whoa, that was weird. I like, couldn't sprint for a sec. Uh, so in here we have, my goal is to have one of every villager. And I think I was only missing one and then a baby zombie came through here and just totally wrecked three of my villagers. Thankfully, I caught him before he got to like every single one of them. That would have been really annoying. But yeah, I I messed up, and I thought that if I just had like a slab there instead of a fence, that it would work just fine. But no, because baby zombies are only one block tall, so they just ran right in there. Hopefully that this should prevent them from getting hit. Uh, theoretically, if these guys weren't in minecarts, I think that they could sort of run up against here, and if the zombie was right up against here, then they could hit him, but I'm pretty sure that a zombie can't hit this guy since he's, like, uh, far back in the minecart there. So we should be safe with that. Uh, so let me go through the trades real quick. Oh, the one... We did lose one kind of cool guy. We lost a blacksmith who had... who's was an armor, but he had a diamond sword as his first trade just because he was uh, he was made in 1.7 and then when he moved over he became a, uh, what, was, what did I say he was? He was an armorer but he still had the first trade that he had which was a diamond sword. Anyway, this guy's a toolsmith and he actually has a diamond axe which I think might also be a special trade. I think that uh, blacksmiths or toolsmiths don't have axes. I think that weaponsmiths now do. So He's a little bit special. We can get two diamond tools from him, axe and pickaxe. Uh, what are you? A farmer. This is where I've been getting most of my emeralds from, pumpkins and melons, which I had. I had stocked up a whole bunch from that farm that I have that's just constantly running, 
And then Cleric, I also got quite a few emeralds from, even though it's much more annoying to trade rotten flesh. Uh, for two reasons. First of all, you have to, like, for every emerald you get, you have to click another stack in here since it's 36. And there's not a really good trade to reset it once it gets locked. Uh, you see I've been using Lapis. Gold is maybe kind of meh. I could use gold, but I don't have a ton of it. Uh, I brought a little bit to reset them every once in a while. Oh, yeah, and we got we got tons of emeralds now, too. We're trading and stuff, getting diamond tools. This guy, oh, this is a good guy. He's got Silk Touch. Silk Touch book for just 11 emeralds. That's awesome. Uh, particularly for shears and stuff. And I think all the rest of these are pretty bad. Efficiency 3 is not terrible. Bane of Arthropods, yeah, that's pretty bad. And, of course, he's got his name tag as the last trade. Over here, we've got an armorer. I'm not sure. Diamond boots might also be a special trade. I don't know if armorers still sell diamond boots in 1.8, or if that's just because he was made in 1.72. Uh, but of course, he's also got the diamond chest piece, protection 2, thorns 1. That's not terrible. Uh, it would probably just use it to repair stuff anyway. Leather worker. Of course, we've got a saddle. Uh, unbreaking 2, protection 2. If I ever want a leather tunic. Perfect. Uh, Shepherd, I haven't unlocked. I don't. Does he even sell anything else? He probably does. We could try trading with him once. I can waste the emeralds. I've got enough. And then what about over here? Got another librarian. Oh right, Smite Five. I kept him because he had Smite Five, which is uh, it's not like all that useful. But Smite Five is a highest level book, so I figured I might as well keep him. Maybe eventually we can get like one of every good enchant in here and get some uh, even like the cheapest of every good enchant, something like that. Butcher, oh so Butcher, you notice I've got a bunch of raw chicken in my inventory. I have been using the raw chicken trade of the Butcher a little bit and I think it's a pretty good one. I set up, I'll show you in a sec, I set up my 3x3 chicken farm over there and I just put water instead of lava and that means that I get raw chicken and you can trade, it's pretty good. The problem is that to get if I wanted to make it really fast, I would have to put something like a few hundred chickens in there, and that would create a bunch of lag because of all the entities. So probably not a good idea. Oh, that's right. You can get every color wool from this guy. That's kind of neat, I guess. Uh, not particularly useful. That's pretty expensive. If you had an automatic wool farm, you could get a decent number of emeralds from the wool, too. That would be kind of cool. So, oh yeah, I'll show you the chicken farm setup real quick. The nice thing about it is that if you want to make it faster, you can just add more chickens. So, you don't need to expand it like you would have to, say, a pumpkin farm and a melon farm, like that one. If I wanted to get more pumpkins and melons, I just have to keep expanding and making it bigger. Whereas with this, I could add more chickens. The problem is that it would create a bunch of lag. So, mm, I'll probably just leave this running for a little bit longer than maybe cut off. I think I've got something like 80 chickens in here. Uh, well, plus the ones that are down here, so it's going to be a little more. Uh, but yeah, I don't want to I don't wanna leave a bunch of entities on the server just at all times. Kind of a uh, bad habit to get into. But I think that's going to be it for this episode. Uh, I'm excited to use villager trading a little bit more and possibly stock up our general store with some of the trades that we can get. Namely, enchanted books. I'd say that's ideal. Oh, speaking of enchants... I did a little bit of enchanting and I got Depth Strider on my boots. I, I enchanted a book with Depth Strider and then I uh, just put it on my zero gravity boots and I love it. It makes traveling around my base so much easier because I can just sort of hop across the water. The paths aren't particularly convenient to be honest. Like if I want to go from here to here, even though it's not that inconvenient, but usually I would just ender pearl and now I can just also glide across with my depth strider so that's pretty cool anyway uh that's gonna be it for this episode i spent a ton of time working on that elevator just so unfortunate that it doesn't work all that well on smp maybe someday microsoft will make uh will fix that just make it work perfectly and then we can celebrate by riding up that water elevator who knows so uh, that's going to be it for this episode. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.